This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. I'm here for Dick. Thank you, Lil Hulk. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another week of the Nightwing News. One of your few remaining sources for comic books. I am Phil. Joining me as always is... I'm Kristen. So, yes, before before we get to some good stuff, well, I guess, guess we'll start with the bad news. Uh, Diamond Comics announced that uh, they're going to stop shipping comic... Well, I think... I don't know what came first. If Diamond made their announcement first, or I know DC stopped printing, and I think... Marvel hasn't stopped. They're probably about to because they can't distribute them anyway. So, yes. We won't be getting any new issues of Nightwing or any other DC or Marvel book for a while, but hey, we already have hey, we have a year of reviews planned out, so hey. Right. The big two may have abandoned you, but we have not. <laughs> Good thing there's back issues. Always back. Heck, on these, on our two podcasts, uh, Capes and Lunatics, Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks, yes, we have plenty of DC and Marvel for you, so stay with that's us. Right. And we're going through the best stuff, because mm-hmm. sometimes the new stuff that's coming out right now, not the best stuff. Yeah, like the stuff we're going to cover tonight, Dick has his memory, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a gem. Oh, but they're going to make us, they're going to drag that out, they're going to make us really wait for that 75, aren't they? <laughs> Uh, let's not, let's not talk about it. Let's just All right. forget about it for right now. <laughs> so, hey, did I hear, uh, did you get something in the mail today? I did. Ta-da! Oh, look, not only is this a comic book review, it's an unboxing video, people. So, if you want to see what, if you want to watch Kristen unwrap this, go, check, right. out, go check out our YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh. Like, All right, it's a mug. This one's on DC Universe. I don't know what inspired me to look on their shop. Probably boredom because I've just been sitting around at home. But they have this mug. So it is Dick Grayson mug. So there, see on that side, it has kind of the minimalist Nightwing DC Universe. And then Ooh. it has him as Robin. Oh, see, it's so shiny. It's reflecting. And they have him as Robin from Batman the Animated Series. Well, it better be shiny. It's brand new, yep. out of just out of the box 30 exactly. seconds ago. That's right. So, yeah, it's looking pretty good. Oh, I just thought of something. You know how they have, like, those, those like, color-changing mugs with the temperature and stuff? Yeah. That'd be awesome if he was Robin when it was cold, and then you pour in hot liquid, and it turns into Nightwing. I know. They should. Yeah, that would be pretty sweet. They, it's... Not like that. I've seen ones, the color changing ones with Batman, where it's mm. like the bad signal comes, or he's standing there, and then he's in the air, or something, or he's not there, and then when it's hot, he is there, or something. But, but yeah, that, that is a pretty cool mug. So I know I'm thinking it'll possibly replace the one I have that has the Nightwing symbol because when I use it, I try to only show that Nightwing symbol side because on the other side, it's all cracking and it said it was dishwasher safe, but it's. Maybe not as dishwasher safe as they implied. So, yeah, that's like I pro- like I probably need new Nightwing T-shirts too because I had some, but like I wear them so much, like the thing starts the the picture starts to crack and stuff. You know, you wash them oh, so many yeah, times the, when it's the yeah you wash them plastic like, on there. You wash them well yeah. anything even if it's like you wash it a hundred times, it's like <laughs> starts to fade or crack. Yeah, yeah, and then it becomes this like gray Nightwing shirt with a baby blue Nightwing on it. <laughs> Yes. All right. Well, this looks like a winner. Nice. This universe. And although most of my mugs are not, uh, it's always nice when it's black on the inside because then you can't see the tea stains as much. Nice. So. All right. Such excitement. Yeah. So should we get to our uh, four-part storyline tonight? Yes. From Bat- Let's do it. Batman Year 3 from Batman 436 through 439, which uh, I couldn't remember. These must be these must come out that uh, must have came out by month, by weekly, by monthly, whatever you want to say. August, because it only says August through September 1989. So I looked it up. Oh, 
So I don't even know if it even says it in the books. I looked it up online. Yeah, it was only August. I know. September. Yeah, I was gonna say it just has the number, but it doesn't. Yeah, because I was even on looking. the inside. It says copyright nineteen eighty nine, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I looked it up. It was only August and September, so they must have been every two weeks on these. Yeah, they must. They, they must hurt. have been. Well, yeah, I mean September. You're getting pretty close to the end of nineteen eighty nine, and, and there's still a lot more stuff happening in nineteen eighty nine yeah. that they needed to get in. Well, sometimes, especially in, at this time period, Marvel and DC, sometimes they would do a lot of their popular books like twice a month in the summer and stuff. So maybe, maybe they figured, hey, the kids are home. Let's give them some comics to read. Oh, yeah. And make and make money. Yeah. But this is the opposite of what they're doing right now. I know. All right. Yes. So Batman Year 3. Yeah. So it's – but even though it's Batman Year 3, it's still not – because I think I'm mis- I'm not sure about year two, but year one is not like part flashback, part yeah, right? no, like it, year it, one it's... is all yeah, and year is year two like that as well. Is there is it is there a year two? Yeah, it, it was in Detective Comics, but yeah, it, it's it's more like year one where it's like all set in the past. Yeah, okay, because yeah, with this one, it's year three, but it's actually year three slash year. Whatever yeah. year real time. <laughs> it, 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 like, Whatever. Yeah, year two, you should read it. It's kind of weird, but it's like it's kind of like the basis of where they like, base a lot of Mask of the Phantasm off of. Cause he, oh, because okay. because because he's fighting a guy named the Reaper and like he's like ready to give up like you know, it's early in his career, you know, second year. He's ready to give up being Batman already for like he's about to like <laughs> this this, he meets this woman who's about to go into the convent. She's a friend of Leslie's, and he, he's, but uh, you know, he's about to woo her away from the convent and give up being Batman. So, well, I'm guess, but she must. Well, something must happen. Something must happen. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll have to check it out. Well, yes, in year three, I can't say no nuns in year three. There's actually a very prominent nun in year three. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, they this- love they love them some nuns. Uh, but yes, the other big thing, of course, is the past stuff is year three, and the stuff happening in the then and now is this is right after Jason's death. Yeah, it's like the cur- it was the current continuity at the time. Yeah, yeah, because that's why that's why Dick is is back in Gotham. And he says, has it really only been two years since I left? So I guess he's, what, supposed to be 20 or 21 now. Maybe, kind of yeah. depends. Oh, but I think we found the divide, the the, uh, the line because these were August and September. So between August and September, I remember when like the prices for the comics went from 75 cents to a dollar because parts one and two are 75 cents. Part The last two parts are a dollar a piece. Uh. So. You're right. So yeah. Dang. So from August to September, that's when. I, oh yeah. Can you ma- Yeah. Can you imagine? Like that's when I really got in the comics when they were a dollar, and that's before they even had the tax on them. So it's like, hey, I want three comics and three bucks. It was so easy. It was so nice. Wow. It was so nice. <laughs> now you don't even get one comic for three dollars. <laughs> oh man. well, if, yeah. Well, plus tax. <laughs> right. Good lord. All right. So Batman four thirty six. Yep. Yeah. So. The other big thing, Jason's dead, and there's a gang war going on. Yeah, Lots of major gang people are being released, and also, coincidentally, a certain someone is up for parole. And this, okay, this is a weird thing, and I don't know why it's stuck in my head, I guess, because I was doing history work, and so dates were in my head. But they, uh, so in the very first one, they say, uh... We're not questioning Anthony Zuko's guilt. He's already served 12 years. Okay, so that's right here on the first page. He's already served 12 years. And then we get all over the place, all these different things about how um, Alfred, because Alfred is the one who keeps going to yeah. um, to try to prevent Tony Zuko from getting out on parole. And he says that... Oh, he says something about it was almost it was almost ten years ago that Dick Grayson became a victim. But if Tony Zuko's been in jail twelve years, then it has to be twelve years ago that Dick became a victim. And then there's a lot of times where people start talking about 
11 years ago this, and Tony Zuko's been planning this for 10 years, which, okay, you can spend some time in prison and then start planning. That makes sense. But I kept noticing, oh, the timeline's and, not adding. And remember when, uh, remember when we did Batman 416? And, you know, he was like, oh, I was Robin for six years. So what are we saying? It's been another four to six years since Dick's been Robin. But no, he's but no, because he said he, it's been two years since he left. Because uh, he says that in here. It's been two again, years the since math doesn't left. add up. <laughs> but, yeah, I know. I mean, it's really pedantic to be like, your math's not adding up. But it's just it's just funny that they I don't understand why they're like, why are they aren't just like he served many years. It's been many years. <laughs> Because that's how they always kind of were in um, yeah. in the early Golden Age comics. That very infamous one where Bruce is giving Dick birthday spankings. And everyone's like, what is going on? This is weird. He spanks him like eight times. But then when he hits his birthday cake, there's like 15 candles on it. So I, but, you know, I, they're trying to keep you guessing. You can't ever know. I mean, that sounds weird, but I think, like, didn't, like, every child and every woman in the 40s get a spanking in comics in those early 40s comics? Because <laughs> didn't Catwoman get spanked? Yes. Was it by Alfred? Yes. 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 And then there's that weird one where Batman's spanking some ra- random woman, and he's like, quiet, pa- Papa Spanks, or whatever. You're like, oh, that's not weird at all. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yes. But, yeah, this was really yes. These were written by Marv Wolfman of Teen Titans fame. Right. So it's kind of like he's kind of using both of his timelines in there because because 416 was written by somebody else. And Marv Wolfman, yeah. a couple times, well, I think in the issue in New Teen Titans where Dick is talking about Jason being dead, he says, I was Robin for 10 years. So, yeah. so that kind of implies Dick was Robin from 8 to 18 and then if he's twenty, so the twelve years fits with that time. Fits with yeah. that timeline. I mean, um, oh, I think they brought Wolf. I, I think they brought Wolfman in on these because I mean, we'll get more into it next episode fully. But you know who appears? What only like maybe a page or two? His first real appearance in Batman four thirty six in flashback. Tim Drake. Tim. Yep. Yep. Yes. yes. This one. Yep. Yep, yeah. Yeah, they definitely year three and Lonely Place of Dying, they they work together. Yes. Um they work together for sure. Anyway. So yeah, Bat yeah, yeah four thirty six starts with Batman, you know, who's more brutal now, you know, ever since Jason's death, uh he's watching these gangsters on the uh on a boat. Cause oh. yes, there's been a lot of gangland killings lately. Then it, then the news helicopter oh. swoops down and starts blasting the boat. <laughs> With machine gun fire. Yep. Batman hooks it and tries to get on the helicopter. <laughs> oh. But then we're back with, yep, Haley Circus flashback. And yes, that's where we get Alfred telling the story. Or he's like thinking this. St- no, I think he is telling the story to the parole board. And yep, well, that's yeah, that's where we a, get well, it a starts picture with- of Tim. Yeah. Well, yeah, it starts with the parole board. We don't see who's coming in to speak to them, but then we see Dick at uh, Wayne Manor and, like, thinking about, like, oh, you know, here's my old bedroom. Here's the Batcave. I mean, it, it, well, here's the thing. You know, like, Dick's like, oh, it's so weird. You know, Bruce has gotten rid of everything at Jason's, his pictures, any mementos in the Batcave, everything. It's all gone. He's like, it's like Bruce is just, like, trying to erase his memory. Yeah. But yeah, then we see El- – we- yeah, then we see someone talking about Tony Zuko's, you know, origins as a kid and going to the uh, orphanage, the St. Jude's orphanage. Yep. Patriot State of Lost Causes. Yep. Then we have Dick meeting, meeting Tim. We are, which, and this also cracks me up because I swear Tim's wearing a suit to the circus. I know. <laughs> Is this like a callback? Is this like a callback to his like 1940 origin? It's like, oh, look, because it seems like m- most of the people in the crowd are like wearing suits or. I don't know. I think maybe people still dress up a little bit in the 80s too. Although I don't know why you dress up, wear a suit to go to the circus, but maybe it was just habit at that point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because we see Dick but- and, you know, he's talking to the circus people. Uh, Harry the Clown, who remember him for next episode. Uh Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, Eleanor the uh, elephant. Get it? Eleanor the elephant. 
And then Dick talking to his parents about going to the World Series. Remember this scene for next episode. Yeah. And then they ran into a couple with a young child that said, hey, it's, this is Tim's first time at the circus. We were wondering if we could take your photo with him. Uh, yeah, and you know, in this, when he says it's only been two years, so Dick's supposed to be about 20. And this, this makes me think that uh, maybe Tim's only like, Six years younger than Dick. Um, I'm pr- I'm pretty sure next we'll we'll get into it next issue, but I think he's like next episode. But I think he's like I think he says twelve or thirteen next step. It's either twelve or thirteen next episode in Lonely Place of Dying. Okay, I was thinking he was more like fourteen. I mean, they might have like they might like close the gap a little more later on, but yeah, right now I think. Yeah, well, it's funny because sometimes I think they stretch the gap out later on later on but it's hard to tell but it's hard to tell because really it's like tim shouldn't be that much younger than jason or jason shouldn't be that much older than tim yeah i know but but anymore it seems like they're doing jason although tim's gotten a little older in the comics now yeah they, yes they say the is th- he like 18 now i don't know but the th- i think yeah because i think he's college age yeah because he was talking about you know whether to you know that like the start of that to uh was it the Detective Comics run? But yeah, lately in the last couple of years, he's been talking about going to college. So he's got to be at least eighteen. Yeah. But yeah, I think they. I think since New Fifty Two, I think they kind of make Dick, Jason, and Tim kind of closer at all in age. Yeah, new, I mean, it's hard to it's hard to say because that New Fifty. But yeah, it, they always because when New Fifty, I always thought it was. Oh, sorry. When New New Fifty Two started, they're like, oh, the DC Universe has only been in a, going on for five years. So it's like, okay, you had Dick, Jason, and Tim within five years. Oh, and then Damien was already yeah. Robin. It's like okay, so everyone yeah, was Robin no, for like a year. Work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Well, I always thought it was weird when they were doing because I thought Tim was like just out of high school. I always thought it was weird when he was off looking for Bruce Wayne that they were so insistent that like he's still seventeen and he's still trying to finish high school and then not finishing high school. I was like. Why didn't you just be like, oh, yeah, he's 18, he graduated high school, and he's taking a gap year. Boom, all of those problems are solved. No one's like, gee, we haven't seen Tim Drake in school much. What's up with that? <laughs> just do his shit. He got his GED. I mean, he was smart enough. Right, but I'm saying it's yeah. comic books. Nobody knows how old anybody is, really. You could have just been like, oh, yeah, he yeah. graduated high school. It ain't no thing. <laughs> but whatever. Mm. Can't tell with their age. Okay, then we have Dick in his circus outfit, but... Yeah. Doesn't that look a lot like another outfit we know? Yep. Oh, but oh, this walking past. Oh, but that scene with his mom. You know, she's like, "Are you happy here?" He's like, "We're not leaving, are we? I never want to leave." I know. I was thinking, what it'd be like to stay in one place like a real family. Because they, their grandfather home. ran away to the circus when he was nine. I never had a home of my own. Which that's interesting because, of course, you. I mean, there are people are always very whatever about Dick's parents, you know. Yeah. And a lot of times, I think more stuff portrays Dick's dad's family, which I mean, I'm not saying his. It's just, yeah, it's just that actually kind of can fit a little bit if you need it to. In with the Court of Owls, race on stuff. If Dick's mom was, you know, also a circus person or whatever, then I love you, Dick. Oh, I love you too, mom. It's... And then, uh... Uh, but then Dick walks past Mr. Haley's trailer. Here's bad stuff. And he says, Mom, Dad, I think something's up. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah, then another one with that little kid. Tim's mom, if you practice, hon, you could be just like him. His dad, don't encourage him, dear. <laughs> that, uh, look, look who's Sowing sitting. some seeds. And then look who's sitting like two seats down or down from them is uh, Bruce Wayne. Yeah, Bruce Wayne. And then Dick performing the quadruple flip of doom. Remember that for next episode also. <laughs> Tim, Man, there's just so many little breadcrumbs in here. Tim does. <laughs> uh-huh. And then they fall. Yeah, so yeah, because there's a trick. Yeah, Mary and John are going to do uh, two triple flips, but then their lines uh, break. And yeah, we see yeah, Dick watches the whole thing. We see Tim watching the whole thing. Looking, Tim looks very like like a tiny Spock there. God, he does. You're right. <laughs> in his in his suit, uh, and then like who else was watching? And then Tim says, "Look, it's the Batman. It's the Batman." Splash page. Yep. Yeah. And you can tell. 
and you can tell, in. and you can tell it's year one because there's no oval around that bat, and uh, got the big pockets on the utility belt. For the three, and then I oh mean, I will make sure get Zuko, and then this, of course, is interesting. I mean, they're mostly Alfred's mostly talking, of course, about Dick and Zuko here, but it does apply in certain ways to Dick and Bruce as well. Two children both saw violence and both wanted revenge. Two children, the same and yet very different. Because Commissioner Gordon drops Dick off, also now in a suit, <laughs> um, to the to the orphanage. The same orphanage and as Zuko went to. So same yes. orphanage, same nun. Yeah. Um, he says, I want the man who killed my parents. Will that bring your parents back? Will that make things better? And Dick realizes, not really. And so he hugs sister Mary Elizabeth, I think. Yes. And then two children, the same and yet very different. Because immediately, you know, when she said that to Tony Zuko, he was like, ah, I don't care. I'm going to kill those people anyway. But when she said it to Dick, he was like, eh, it won't matter. And he, he, became, and he became a nice person. Uh, that, but then we see Dick changing into his costume in the cave. So what, does that collar just, like, pop up? I know, I was wondering the same thing. I'm like, man, you must have, like, a ping. <laughs> uh, but yeah, but he's thinking, yeah, when Alfred wrote and said he feared for Bruce's sanity, I thought he was exaggerating. Now I'm not so certain. He refuses to acknowledge Jason's death. He never even called to tell me. I've got to find him. As Nightwing. Dun, dun. Uh, and then... Them. Batman's out there, yeah. yes, with a different, with his mm, yeah. old Batman, breaks, old break, bat, break, bat break, symbol. Breaks in on some of the mob, just be like, hey, someone's trying to kill you. That's when the helicopter shows up again and just like missiles the whole house off the cliff. Lays waste to them. Also, I would just like to note, I noticed that in the notes page, somebody wrote a letter. Dear Denny, I love Batman comics. But why'd you kill Robin? I like Jason a lot. I got all his comics. I found out in a magazine that Robin was going to die. I miss him. But why did you kill him? And they didn't even reply. They just printed the guy's letter and didn't reply. Mood. Mood. Uh. But yeah, if you if you look at the uh, letters pages, like at this point it was all snail mail, so every letter was like five to six months like behind whatever issue that was in. You know, these days if they the books that do bother to do a letters page, it's all email, so that you can have like letters for the last ep last issue. It's like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But these are behind, yeah, because they're talking about uh, four thirty three was the many deaths. Of, oh yeah, that of was, that man. That was a good um, history. Yeah, they say Dick Grayson sorrow, and yes, because somebody else wrote, I was glad to see a glimpse of Dick Grayson. I'd just like to see him more. Well, boom, you got what you wanted, person. There you are. Are we ready for issue two? Yep. Yes, because it picks up right where the last one let off, left off. The uh, helicopter blows yeah. up the gangster house. That's a pretty snazzy cover. Actually, they all have pretty good covers for this one. Yeah, this I like. One has good I think my favorites are maybe the. I don't know, pretty good. I was gonna say the first. I one, think either two or three. I was gonna say the four is my least favorite. It's like the hardest one to see. Yeah, I was gonna say if it was like if it was like more close up on Dick, it would be a better cover. Yeah, but I like the little. All right, boom! Batman's trying to get out of the rubble. Dick can follow him very easily, and he finds out. Oh, Batman is leaving a nasty trail of blood in his wake. Further oh. evidence of how he is. Off the rails. Well, yeah, because he goes into this bar and all these stolies have, like, you know, bleeding from the nose and stuff. Oh. Dick on his snazzy motorcycle. Yes. Wait. Goes to pull Batman out of the wreckage. He helps get Batman out. <sighs> a lot of wreckage. And... A lot of wreckage. I mean, you'll see next episode. Yeah, there's a little more wreckage. <laughs> yeah. And Batman's like... Here. Just walks off. <laughs> When love he's like Batman are you alright he's like he does his raw Nightwing what are you doing here yeah and then he just turns and walks away um and in his bat convertible <laughs> yep and then this is kind of interesting because then we go back to the house and we have Alfred who comes in and is walking by looking at a picture of Bruce and Dick camping <laughs> um and he is 
keep, you know, Zuko in prison. I failed you when you needed me. When your parents were murdered so much as you died with them. A killer is going free and I fear your reaction. Yeah, it's almost like... And then how will you handle this? What will you do? And then you realize he's almost talking more to Bruce. Oh, yeah. Because I think... Because he says, I wish I'd been there to temper you when you grew up, as I had with Master Dick, so... Because I think just with the violence and everything, it's like, yeah, Alfred's like, yeah, Dick would probably be angry and sad, but he's like, at this point, after Jason's death, I don't know if Bruce would just go off and kill Zuko. Yeah, yeah. Also, isn't that picture of Bruce so hilarious? Mm. (laughs) His smile. (laughs) Uh, I think they they even play with that um, in Lonely Place of Dying. You see all these pictures of like him and Dick, and he's always smiling in the pictures with Dick, but he never smiled in the pictures with Jason. No, he's becoming more serious and grim over time. <laughs> then we get another flashback of uh, Alfred picking Dick up at the uh, orphanage. After Again, the- Dick wearing a suit. <laughs> the same one, I think, yeah. And then he says, you know, oh, his parents were slain by criminals. He sees himself in you. Yeah, because, yeah, this. He's like, Mr. Wayne's got to be great. And he's like, I'm going to love living here. And then this, I think, is so interesting because right away, so there's the pool and they're in the ring. So immediately Dick's like, I want to do something to make Zuko pay. You wanted him dead. Do you still want that? No, it wouldn't bring my parents back. I wish I could do something that, so people like him couldn't hurt anyone ever again. So, I mean, they've only known each other like 10 seconds. And Bruce says, there is a way, provided you're willing. I've seen your acrobatics. You're trained and dedicated. It won't take long to complete your education. Vacation two years ago, the partner was unthinkable. Idea of a partner was unthinkable, and then he's already taking Dick uh, down into the bat, down to the bad cave. And so, this is kind of interesting because in this one, it almost implies, which is different, I think, from any other. Well, mm, no, I guess the first one, no, but in some of the more modern versions, um, Bruce takes Dick in. This one, it's very evident that Bruce is like, "I'm taking you in." So that you can be Robin. Yes. Yeah, and I don't think, and in the other ones, it's kind of, I'm taking you in, and then I let you be Robin because I understand your pain. It's just inter- It's just interesting because I think in some more modern versions of the origin, they actually uh, maybe have Bruce be a little bit more in touch with his Bruce side because it seems... Like, it's Bruce that says, I really see myself in this kid. I want to help him. Yeah. And, then, and in this one, it's very Batman. And it seems like they're, they're also setting up, too, like, you know, Dick's going to one day, Again, five minutes in, and he's already going to be taken over for Bruce one day, because even Alfred says, when one is going to die, one realizes his mortality. Continuity is sought, father to son. Right, yeah. Bruce's are, yeah, they're already the father-son thing. And Dick, Bruce Wayne's going to die? <laughs> Not for a very long time. Uh, yeah. And then he is uh, Batman. Welcome to the Batcave. But he isn't like welcome to the Batcave. Start eating rats. <laughs> I just love. I just love when he's like, "Dick, I'll make your life impossible. You have to study more than you ever have. Whatever your workout r- regimen was in the circus, triple it, then triple that." <laughs> Whoa! I don't even know if that's possible though. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we get a montage of working out and studying. Yeah, the training montage. Yep, and then studying uh, books and lab equipment. And then, boom, Bruce slipping in quickly. And like they, they're just wandering around the house in their costumes. Like I you know, know I'm like, I'm like, where did he park the Batmobile on the on, at the front door? I'm like, that's not, that's not really. <laughs> I mean, you could have just, yeah, just, just had taken down Jason's pictures. I mean, if they wanted Alfred there, they could have had Alfred down in the cave, and those two come zooming in. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, whatever. And remember this line for this episode and next episode when in the flashback Bruce tells Dick we're not brutalizers. We've got to think with our heads, not with our fists. Yep. But yeah, I just love that they just come charging through the front door. <laughs> and then Bruce gives Dick the that Robin outfit. I had it patterned after your circus costume. So a little more Bruce doing the outfit than, than Dick. But, you know. I guess if we have a lot to take care of. We can't have the designing it montage. So I don't think the, I don't think it even says here who came up with the name Robin though, because it looks like the R is already on the costume. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It doesn't say. I mean, I would assume they talked about it before. And he just gave him a costume, but yeah, they don't talk about the name in this one. The only the only thing they hint about it is when um, 
when they're busting up some of Zuko's thugs, they said, the name's Robin. Mm -hmm. Robin Hood, not Robin Hoods. So that's it. And it, with the development of Robin, you can see when Robin goes out with Batman, that's when he has the oval on. Yep. And then Zuno's been marked. And I love this one. Winner and champion. <laughs> But yeah, they're following Zuko around, and he's talking about this ledger he came, keeps with names and dates and everything. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, but yes, remember, kids, why the oval around the bat? So you can trademark it. <laughs> yep, because you can't trademark it just a plain bat. Yeah. And then Dick's like, I don't like it, Alfred. Yep, Bruce is messed up. And boom, Bruce is already gone. And we find out he's gone because he is going to... Slip in on the crime family's meeting. There he is, pretending to be a waiter uh -huh. and hiding his bat, his, hiding his cowl under the dish. Yep. And then we find out that how is Tony Zuko getting parole? He is pushing on Taft, one of the parole board members. <laughs> and then they try to leave us on a cliffhanger. Alfred looking at his gun and saying somebody has to stop Zuko. Cliffhangers every issue. And then they make you pay 25 cents more to find out. Well, yeah, they get you on the hook for those first two parts and then they raise yeah. that quarter. Yeah. Oh, and then they keep up the cliffhanger on the first page. Alfred's like, I'm going to do it. Holding that oh gun. Oh, my God. And then, oh, next page, he's like, I can't. Not even for you. There must be another way. And it's true. Because I don't think Dick would have wanted Alfred to kill Zuko. Oh, no. He wouldn't want that. He wouldn't want that. And I like this one. Bruce, he raised me to think, but he's no longer thinking. He taught me the importance of justice, but lately he hasn't been just. He was like a father to me, and I loved him. And though he could never bring himself to say it, I know he loved me too. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think Bruce is going crazy. Yep. Um... He certainly... Kind of off the hook. Oh, I love I love the next page. I've heard it all before. My God, even Cordy sometimes thinks Bruce has been crazy for years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but he was always in control, and now he's not in control. Until, and he's trying to erase Jason's memory. Until Jason died. And then, yeah, like, we get like four panel flashback of Jason's death at the hands of the Joker. And I don't know if it's just mm -hmm. this artist, but I don't know why the Joker has like Wolverine's hair in this in the flashback. Because he did it even in the original. Yeah. Must just be the art. Uh, and then the warehouse, I guess it was, where some of the people were killed. Dick goes and checks it out. And you see the kind of, you know, he's going through the detective motions while also remembering what Batman, what Batman taught him. Yeah. And we have this funny one where he says, you know, he finds... He's like already figured out all this stuff about maybe it was a parachute. And the guy says, eh, not bad, kid. Everything could become a cop. But <laughs> so this time he says, nah, I hate punching time clocks. Well, 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 someone will change his tune in a few years. He just didn't want to be a Gotham cop. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, maybe that, yes. Maybe that's it. Huh. Well, well, this is my lucky, this is my lucky night wing, as in night wing. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, yeah. Cute. Then, okay, more with the... Uh, well, well, the reporters are out front commi uh, questioning Commissioner Gordon because they're like, in the last month and a half, six crime lords have been brutally murdered and, you know, Gordon's proposing a meeting between a negotiator for the city and representatives of the various alleged crime families. Yep, and then that's where Batman is still trying to negotiate with them. And then, boom, Alfred goes to the prison and he tries to pay Tony Zuko to leave the city. Alfred's holding up a check. And Tony Zuko's like, leave Gotham. There's no way I want to leave Gotham. Hmm. Hmm. So we know something is up. Oh, yeah, he laughs. Oh, yeah, he, he laughs. Like, gives him the ha ha ha. Yep. And Alfred's like, oh, snap, something is up. Just look at Alfred's face. He's like, guys, no. Uh, but yeah, so th back in the cave, Alfred's trying to tell Dick, but Dick's working on the lead he found. Uh, which yep, is and he's doing lots of stuff. So, and actually, this is a, actually I wonder if part of this is where they got some of the inspiration for um, 
oh, the Batman the Animated Series episode, Robin's Reckoning, because, you know, he's doing oh, yeah. all of that, uh, you know, stuff in the computer is like, oh, Tony Zuko was one of the people. And, you know, that's a little different because they just need to still arrest Tony Zuko, but, you know. Yeah, this was a big, Anyway, Batman this was big treats up the thugs. Oh, yeah. Even points a gun at him. Now can we talk? Yep. And, and more flashbacks to them putting the squeeze on oh. Zuko back in the day. But he's but he's talking to the mobsters and they're all like, oh yeah, all the active families are here. The rest of them are, you know, either packed it up or dead or whatever. But then they're like, uh, oh, but uh, they're, they've all been waiting for Zuko to go free. And Batman's like, Zuko? Yeah, Zuko. Zuko. And they're like, yeah, he's been in the cooler, him and his book. Hmm, his book. Yeah, diary. Kept it from day one. It's got everything in it. Names, dates, places. He's blackmailed half of us for years. And then that's when Batman finally finds out he's getting out tomorrow. But you could have found that out without being a uh, mobster if you just said, oh, hey, Alfred, what's up? But, you know, that would be too uh, easy. But, uh, oh, but Batman proposes a truce between him and the mob bosses. And they're like, wait, what are you talking about? And, you know, he's like... It's like either do things my way or, you know, you, you can all kill each other and I'll just pick off whoever's left. <laughs> and I love this guy. If you were one of us, you would own this city. Yep. He's like, but I'd never be able to wash off the dirt. <laughs> yeah, ain't you hurt? And they go to Drexel, who apparently is like Tony's main man. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, Batman says he wanted inf information on the gang killings. He's like, if you don't want to give it to me, that's okay. I'll leave the room and let you in these gentlemen discuss who might be killing them off. Your choice, them or me. Yep. Then we get back to the Batcave, and this is my favorite part of the of the issue, and I think it's really important when they're talking about that. Um, Alfred checking in, Dick, are you you know enjoying this? I also know I'm doing good and that I'm helping people. I think in a way I'm helping Bruce too. Yep. How was that, sir? I used to think he was more real as Batman than as Bruce Wayne, but because he just can't be around some stupid some cold superhero around me, I think Bruce is becoming more real, too. I know what we're doing is important, but it's not everything. Mom and Dad always taught me to enjoy myself. I think maybe I'm helping Bruce to enjoy himself sometimes, too. And that's awesome. And I think totally true that, yes, having having a Robin helps Batman, but also having a kid that lives with him helps Bruce to become more real. And set limits. And to not just totally... And that's not totally, because I think there is, I'm definitely not, I don't really think that there's, I don't know, the way I more headcanon, if you will, Bruce, is not that Batman is the real Bruce Wayne and Bruce Wayne is the fake, but more Batman is one aspect of Bruce Wayne. Brucey Wayne that he shows to most of the public is really fake, yeah. but then there's real Bruce Wayne in between that's like not totally, that Batman is more real than the Bruce Wayne fake. But Batman is also an act. Yeah. And then there's real Bruce Wayne that's kind of in between. Batman, Brucey Wayne, that's super fake, and then Bruce Wayne. Exactly. And I think and Dick is helping him to get more in touch with that real Bruce Wayne that's in the middle. But yeah, I love Dick's looking up the uh <clears throat> the board of directors for Allied Importers and listing off names. He's like, Oh my god. <laughs> Alfred's like, now is the time for us to talk. So, yep. Yes. Now we know. So, yeah. So, and then. Yeah, Dick drives to the penitentiary and Batman's already waiting on the hill overlooking the jail. Yep. And he hops, and he hops in. Mind if I sit down? Maybe because it's so controversial, but I'm like, do they usually release prisoners in the middle of the night? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I don't <sighs> I don't know when they usually release. I thought they usually did actually. it with like business hours. I was like, eh. yeah, you would think it would be you know a time when you could get the bus or something. Exactly. Um, but who knows? Maybe he's being released at dawn. It's hard to tell what color. I mean, you know, the sky looks like it might be lightening up. Yeah, it's who like knows? pink, maybe. Yeah, maybe. But still. and then and it's funny because Dick is the one that did you know the computer work, the like brain work, and Bruce basically just punched the answer out of people. Well, yeah. Um, look, well, look on this page, the sky is pink, like kind of pink but on the last page mm -hmm. it's it's black so it's like what time is it? <laughs> i don't yeah so true all right then you realize but, zuko you know had something on taft which is why yeah he was he blackmailed his way out yeah but bruce is even saying you realize with what we know we could stop him before he leaves and dick's like yeah but i want him to taste freedom for just a moment before we do 
Yeah, which is pretty funny. That kind of makes it kind of makes sense. And then though, he gets out and he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm free." Yeah, you're right. It's definitely- I'm king. And then, boom, that crazy uh, helicopter yeah. helicopter comes out of nowhere, and boom. I love how every shot hits him right in the chest. There's, like, no, like, <laughs> shots anywhere else. It looks like every shot hits him right in the chest. Yeah, like, whoever is driving that helicopter is really good with their aim. So, yeah, zoom- and then Dick, of course, has a moment where he's like, oh, you knew this was going to happen, didn't you? And that's how we end. For real, this is full of, and then this one, probably my least favorite cover. Like I said, if they had focused on Dick more, I think they could have made more of it, but. Yeah, I don't know, it just seems like kind of too grainy or something. Yeah, well, yeah, it's because it's in the rain. <laughs> They're supposed to be right. in the rain. Yep. And Dick's like, oh, you knew they were going to kill him, didn't you? And you let them. And then he goes, well, since Jason has been killed, you've been acting insane, bludgeoning criminals. You considered letting him die, and you let him kill. He's like, I didn't know about this. You know, I've never be a party to murder. He's oh, like, okay. yeah. but right. oh, but here we're not. Dick says, "How you nearly let one of them die locked away in a subway tunnel?" I believe that's referring to uh, Starlin's story, Ten Nights of the Beast," which was like the first appearance of KG Beast. Like you know, the whole story, of Batman's like, "Oh, I think I'm like too old and slowing down. I don't know if I can beat the beast." So eventually, he just like traps him in a sub, or, like a sewer tunnel or something. And the beast is like, oh, yeah, come on, beat me. And he's like, no. He's like, I don't have, the, I don't have anything to prove. I don't, my ego's not in this. He just, like, shuts the door. <laughs> so I don't know if this is, like, a, I don't know if this is, like, Wolfman retconning it where it's like, yeah, Bruce, Batman wouldn't la- leave someone to die. He called the police a couple hours later, you know? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. And then he's like, okay. All right. And I mean, I guess it makes sense that you would doubt Bruce for a minute there because he has been acting pretty crazy. Mm. <laughs> Pretty unlike himself. But right. then as soon as Bruce is like, you know I wouldn't do that. He's like, okay, all right. I mean, I guess New 52 could have brought him back. But I was going to say, if Batman had let the beast die, then he wouldn't have shot Dick in the head. Yes, but Ooh, you know Batman. that's ironic. Like, decades before, Dick's arguing for the life of the guy who would shoot him in the head later on. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, that's how they do. They can't just deliberately kill someone. I know. And of course, then, I mean, this is kind of why, you know, Dick must feel so guilty when he doesn't stop that person from killing, you know, Blockbuster many, many years into the future. Yeah. Well, it's because even though, you know, he didn't do it, he's like, oh, we can't just stand aside. And of course, this is the one thing that, like, they kind of play on this in the Titan show, but then they have it go totally differently because mm-hmm. Dick's totally like, yeah, I'm just going to let you get killed there, Zuko, and not feel bad about it. And then this one, he's like, what? No. And I swear, this is like the closest Bruce can say to I love you because Dick's like, you, you, then why did you just stand here waiting for Zuko to walk free? And Bruce is like, I watched him and I was shaking. I was afraid I'd strangle him for, yeah, you know. And then he's like, now I have to turn away and run away. Yep. Yes, get in my car. When are you going to open up, Bruce? You came so close and you shut down all over again. Well, the sun's coming yep. up. Count Dracula, gotta get home. I know, but still. Also, he was too close to making himself emotionally vulnerable, and he wasn't prepared for that. So, oh my lord! So he's li- so yeah. Batman's listening to talk radio on the way home. It's like how 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 long ago was it that Zuko got shot? His body's still laying on the ground, but but it's already on the radio. Oh yeah, Zuko's just been killed. I'm like, damn, the body's not even cold yet. Yeah, well, but it's that Taft guy who's doing it. I so. guess, yeah. Oh, and then no, like, he's doing. You know, he's out there because he wants to. Uh, well, they wants to. They want to. You know, he wants not, to find where the book is. Yeah. Yep. And, oh, hey! On a totally unrelated note, the orphanage is being torn down tomorrow. <laughs> yep. And then here's Batman unpacking his utility belt and putting something in a drawer. Yep. And then, of course, we have to have one moment where Batman is, like, so smart. Nick's like, I don't get it. Why do they want this ledger? He's like, isn't it obvious? It covers all the criminal activity. Zuko had something on Taft, and Taft wants that ledger. Yeah. It's like, okay, so even though it's been five seconds, and it's still day, I have some theories I want to check out. I'm coming with you. No! (laughs) I don't need any partners. Not ever again. We'll see how that goes. Why won't he accept help? Alfred, he's afraid. Afraid that what happened to Jason could happen again. And afraid of what would happen. probably true. And then afraid of what would happen to him. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I can sympathize. I was afraid. 
Bevin. Yeah, Alfred. Said, yeah. He's like, Bruce, I'm not, uh, Alfred, I'm not Bruce. After his parents died, he grew up alone. Because I guess this must still be before they retconned in Alfred raising him. At the source, at the orphanage, I had Mary Elizabeth, and I had Bruce, and I had you. I had people who loved me, people who cared. Which, again, yeah, I think is so important um, in why, I mean, their personalities are also somewhat different. I mm-hmm. think Dick, you know, even if they're, even if Bruce's parents had never died and Dick's parents had never died, Dick would have been a more bubbly people oh, yeah. person type person than Bruce Wayne. But definitely part of why Dick ends up so eh, relatively normal um, for a bat anyway uh, is because, yeah, he had, you know, he had that outlet, but also he had Bruce and Alfred. Yeah. To help we, him. Yeah, we get the flashback of uh, the hearing where Bruce is trying to get custody of Dick. Right. And, yeah. and it's always weird to me. I feel like. I feel a little bit because so many he I feel like Dick Grayson is the most famous ward ever. Like if people even know what the word ward mean, it's because of the sixties Batman show where they're like, Bruce Wayne is youthful ward, ward, Dick Grayson. Because it's like they can never get rid of that. Because even um in the uh I mean, even that one time when uh when he finally adopts Tim, he's like, Oh, I can't do it adopt you as my ward because like they don't do that anymore. Yeah. I can only adopt you as my son to like i you know make it fa- make it faster plus you know he'd known tim for years at that point but it's always like they're so devoted to the ward because they even have it dick saying mr wade said he wasn't going to try to be my father he wouldn't adopt me he'd just make me his ward he would, like, later, he would later adopt dick when he was an adult i know right i mean i know they later it's just funny it's like they can't it's like they can't let go of that ward because it's so famous because it's so famous like we can't cause they can't just be like yeah he'd up you know whatever, or making his war. So yeah, he's kind of like, and he says, I don't want another father. I mean, that makes sense, of course. That makes yeah. sense, of course. I mean, and I think that's even uh, partially a little bit why Tim is at first resistant because, yeah, his dad had problems, but, you know, he had a dad and, you know, he didn't need Bruce necessarily to fill in. But, you know, it becomes pretty obvious um, over the years that, you know. Yeah, because, yeah. Even he starts to be, because you can have more than one dad. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, Mr. Haley's even like, oh, if he can't be with us, I think Bruce Wayne's good for him. And Dick's like, if I can't be with my parents, I like to be with Mr. Wayne. He's cool. He's the Batman. Oops. <laughs> he didn't say that. I know. And then Bruce did care and you cared. I was given love. I didn't have time to brood or dwell in the past. That's what he says Alfred. And that's really good. Oh, and then we get a shot of their old Batmobile. Yeah, I love that. That's like one of my, that's like maybe my second or third favorite Batmobile. Yeah. With the bubble, with the bubble over the, uh, yeah, and the big bats. And then we see Bruce basically just going and beating the crap out of a bunch of different people. Oh yeah, no trying problem. to find, trying to find that book. Batman walks into a bar. Not in a good place. So we go to Dick, who is funnier, who busts in on Drexel while he's taking a shower. Yeah. <laughs> That's like. Psycho there for Drexel taking a shower, and then someone's like, Hey, I'm like, ah, uh, so yeah, so yeah, Dick's asking him, you know, tell me everything. Uh, you know, after Drexel's like, I told Batman everything, we don't communicate that well these days, yeah, which is true, but tell also, me everything. Also, and then, for whatever reason, like, why is Dick messing with the guy's toothpaste? <laughs> Maybe trying to be like, oh, I could squeeze the life out of you, just like this toothpaste. I know, because then he, or maybe he just feels like he has to do something with his hands, because then in this one, he's like, Zuko's beginning, if he went his birth, or wait a minute, then he's like, squeezing the toothpaste. It's so random. Uh, Yeah, but he's like, oh, wait a minute. That's why he was so desperate to leave prison this month. The orphanage is being torn down tomorrow. They're like, okay, thanks, Drex, a lot of you won. I don't miss Have that. fun and don't miss that small smudge down there. <laughs> Like, is that supposed to be a... I think that's a crack on his uh, manhood. Okay, that's what I was thinking, too. I'm like, is that a, is that a slur on his manhood? I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Man, poor Drexel can't catch a break tonight, because now... Uh, Taft comes in, yeah. Taft, who's been hiding behind the... Who was hiding behind the door. Goodbye. Holding the gun. Maybe he's not getting after Nightwing left, probably. Probably. Because you don't know how much time has passed. When Drexel finally comes out, uh, it's like interesting to hear you about the orphanage. Goodbye, Drexel. 
But yeah, but because then at the manor, Bruce is talking to Alfred, and he's like, I double checked all his bank accounts, everything, there's nothing. He's like, pull up the uh, fa- Zuko vow, and uh, Alfred's like, not necessary. I'm very familiar with that vow. With Zuko's like, yeah. at home with his parents, their death, the orphanage, all that followed. And Bruce's like, what? The orphanage! Ah! And then we go. <laughs> yep. And then, boom! We're back at the orphanage! Oh, look who got the look who figured it out first. Oh, Nightwing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I just came here to look. I'm Nightwing from the Titans, and then she says, "I know you. I know you very well." Because it's the mm. same. It's the same. System that makes me think this. that the nun knows these nuns. Very smart. Uh, and they're tearing it down. Progress, you know, find out a man who stayed here for a while, Tony Zuko. Oh, I remember him. Last time I saw him was 11 years ago, which really probably should have been 12 since he's been in prison 12 years, but whatever. He went He went to the he bell was, tower with a pail. Yep. Yeah, mm, but he was gone. Mm. Poor Batman and I put him in prison. He returned here to his womb. It always comes back to your childhood, doesn't it? To wherever you were happiest. To your private rosebud. And he sees the mortar. Old movie reference for everyone. Yep. And sees. then, ah, here's a spot where the mortar is looking a little janky. So pulls, Someone did a patch job. He pulls out a laser. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. I guess. I mean, that's what, I mean. Yeah, it does kind of look like that. Yep. But then you see someone coming in who hurts that nun. I don't know if he kills that nun. I think he just hits her over the head and knocks her out. Okay, it's, it, true. It's a, but it's like a lead pipe. It's very clue. Well, it might be a tire iron, but I think it's supposed to be. Si- oh, it's supposed to be similar right. to a uh, to a crowbar. Uh-huh. Yeah, yes. uh, yeah, I think you're right. Tire iron, yeah. And then we have Dick pulling it out, which I think they forgot to color his hand in. <laughs> oh yeah, because looks yeah, flesh covered. Yeah, because yeah, the Batmobile. Bingo. Up, Batman, the Batmobile's pulling up as Dick's looking through the ledger, and he's like, yep. and then. Another mini cliffhanger. Dick's looking through the ledger. You see the guy behind him with the tire iron. You're like, oh no! I, I mean, then he ducks. Boom! I know. At first, he's like, oh, I heard you coming, and he like, kind of kicks him from behind. But then all he tap must get must get in a lucky shot. So he just starts wailing on Dick with the tire iron. Yeah, yeah, he yeah he must. Because he's like, it's, yeah. Then he's hitting him in the he's hitting him in the back. He's like, no one else is getting that book. <laughs> Uh, he destroyed me, and then Batman pulls up, and he can hear their voices. And he says, Dick, no! And, so, and, so, and somehow Batman yeah. knows exactly what's going on, even though know, he's down on the ground, and Dick and Taft are up in the Well, because he can hear them in the clock tower. Yeah, but I mean, the tire iron and everything, because, yeah, once again... Oh, yeah, oh, no, yeah. Because once again, he's flashing back, because he's like, oh, no, not again. Well, yeah, I think it's... I'm assuming that Batman's the one who's having the flashbacks, and then oh, it's yeah, like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, what that's... Batman's thinking, this is what's happening, this yeah. is what Batman's thinking, this is what's happening. Not another... Not another partner by a beaten to death by a piece of metal. Yeah, which I mean, it kind of is, but and it's like Jason for the first time in months that name comes to his lips. Oh, which is good. I mean, it shows that he's like kind of starting to heal. Uh, but but, but then Taff says the, is- Taff says the wrong things. He's like, all the gangs are gonna be mine. I'm picking up where Zuko left off, and Dick's like, no, never. Yeah, right. Nobody takes over for him. Nobody. And it gives him a second win, and he revives, and he punches Tap. Boom. Nobody. He's pretty sure he's got him all punched out. All those deaths. All for this stupid book. And then... Tap starts rushing Dick from behind as Batman's coming up and yells, Dick! Yep. And it's honestly a good thing that Tap falls over the edge, because that was Batman yelling Dick with some secret... Identity revealing. Yeah, I know. Stuff I was right like, there. Batman would yell at anyone else for that. Yeah, right. He's like, Batman? And then, but he's not in his right mind. Well, he's about, he's had his break. He's like, ah, having his moment where he has to think about Jason again. And so hopefully he's helping him heal. Boom. Like so, yeah, so the book goes, the little tap goes over the edge and the book goes with him and the pages get scattered to the wind. Yep. Book is gone, blown away. The rain washed all the rain away. washed away. And he's like, we could have put so many criminals away. And then, yeah, Bruce. Dick figured out before I did. He's become quite a detective and quite a man. Yeah. And he had some unfinished business to take care of, so he goes to talk to his parents. 
Yes. Yep. In so the- a good ending. Batman is starting to snap out of it. And the next issue um, and the next episode, the most startling new event in the life of the Batman. It's a boy. Yeah. I like. He's on the road to healing, but not quite yet. But I suppose first thing to healing is recognizing you have a problem. <laughs> and Bruce has done that now. <laughs> Mm-hmm. He has done that. But yes, I really like that one. I like that. I mean, I actually think Bruce is dealing with it in a bad way, but it's a pretty good depiction of grief. Oh, because, yeah. I mean, many people, I mean, people grieve in all kinds of different ways, and many of us would grieve in bad ways like that where we would lash out. You know, bar- I mean, it, it, yeah, it's very fitting, feels very. Feels very real. And hey, it's all Bruce's fault. Had I not kicked Dick out and taken Jason in. <laughs> uh, yes, but the only person who's responsible for killing Jason is the Joker. That's right. Yep. And then it was awesome because Dick really shines through here. You know, how he's how he's smart. Um, he, you know, he understands the detective stuff well, but also how he cares. You know, he cares about Bruce and he cares about following the rules, yep. so to speak. I like Which I think sometimes good. sometimes later authors don't always... I don't know. I mean, some do a good job. Like, the one we'll read later, Devin Grayson has her... You know, Dick cares about the rules. You know, he's the one that remembers the oath uh, so well kind of thing. But then there's other times where he, like, beats the... That time when he beats the Joker to death. Although, I mean, that you can also... Well, excuse that um well he thought the know, joker was, he was respons- emotionally he was emotionally distraught well yeah he thought the joker was responsible for tim's death so he thought the joker had a second robin on his uh tab he's like no no more yeah so yes that was an extreme situation dick normally isn't just like yeah let's kill some people no, or no. beat people up unnecessarily you know as we saw in the nudge as well and the, the uh special batman 80th one one of the things that batman did to nudge uh, Dick out of the way was be like less receptive kind of to the to the victims. You know, Dick wanted to stay with that little kid. Batman was like, Whoa. <laughs> no, yeah, so, yeah. This is a good, it's a good story, and it's taking us into exciting places with the startling new event in Batman's life. <laughs> yes, lonely place of dying next week. Oh. So. Yeah, this this story is an A for me. A. Yep. Yep. It's very good. My only criticism is they keep saying twelve years and then ten years and then eleven yeah. years. I'm like, ah, didn't someone notice this? <laughs> Just the details. But yeah, I mean if you like Batman, if you like Robin, if you like Lightwing, yeah, this is a story for you. And Alfred does a good job too. Oh yeah, Alfred. So Yes, so... It's a winner all around. Yeah. Before, Good old Marv. Before we go, I was going to say, this was 1989. If there's any Dick Grayson stories we like pre-1989 we haven't hit that you really like, write in. Tell us what, tell us the, tell us your favorite Dick Grayson story from the early days. Yep. And I feel like kind of how Chuck Dixon was everywhere writing all kinds of Batman stuff in the 90s, that was Marv in the 80s. Yeah, well... Marv was like Mr. 80s. <laughs> well, I mean, Dick was... Probably, you know, after he left, he was mostly just in Titans, and that was all Marv writing, so, yeah. Right. But then, but he is writing a lot of these. I mean, he kind of met, he was clearly one of their, you know, top writers. Well, I think they brought him in, too, to create Tim, too. Right, yeah. They're like, do we need somebody who's not a little snot like Jason? (laughs) Yeah. And, yeah, well, and and because, you know, because he was writing Titans, and Titans was still selling really well, he was on fire. Plus, next, plus the lonely place of dying was a crossover between Batman and Titans. This is true. All right. So, should we get out of here? Yep. I think we've covered it. All right. So, yes, everyone, join us here next week for a lonely place of dying from Batman. I mean, it's been printed in trades all over, but uh, originally from Batman 440 through 442, and what is it? New Teen Titans 60 and 61, I believe. Something like that, yeah. It's I in the those 60s. are the numbers. Yeah, I have it in trade, so yeah. But yeah, I, I remember the Batman issues though. Yes. Yeah, I have the individual ones, but they're upstairs right now. <laughs> a lot of good Dick Grayson stuff, but also, like we said, the like we get the full origin of Tim Drake. So, yep. All you yeah. fans, join us. 
Yeah, it should be quite the it should be quite the crowd pleaser uh, because yes, I mean a lot of people it's obviously big on their Tim Drake Tim Drake lists, of course, but it's a really good Dick Grayson story too. <laughs> oh yeah, and I don't know. I was gonna say I would. I don't want to spoil things. I would tell you who the villain is, but I don't want to be too obvious. <laughs> like you just were. <laughs> I was not. <laughs> Hey, it can't always it can't always be Joker. It's always exciting. I, 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 I didn't take it. Up. I didn't take it to the extreme. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's get out of here. All <laughs> right. So remember, lonely place of dying. Email us your thoughts, or even email us your thoughts on uh, Batman Year Three. We'll read them next time. Uh, email us Capes and Lunatics at gmail dot com. Call the voicemail six one four three eight two two seven three seven. That's six one four thirty eight Capes and. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, follow everything, uh, capesandlunatics.org, the YouTube channel, all of it, all in one convenient place. That's linktree, L-A-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash capesandlunatics. There's links to everything there. And support the sponsors, please. Tweaked Audio, Hunt a Killer, Podlife the Book, now in digital and paperback. Oh, and speaking of books, if you like books, pick up Dick Grace and Boy Wonder. Still was still as pertinent today as it was when it was first published five years ago. So please, when you, man, yeah, five years ago, when you go on Amazon to buy your books or hell, even your comic books at this point, because a lot of the stores are closed, uh, use the Southgate Media Group link right down there in the show notes. Uh, doesn't affect you at all, but it helps support these shows because believe it or not, these do cost money. Stock up on some trade paperbacks. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, go buy some old stuff while there's no new comics, people. And if you can, if you, any of your local stores are open, support them. Because remember, support the small, uh, support the small businesses. Yeah. Because DC, Marvel, they're all owned by big companies. They don't need your money as much as these small companies do. Yeah, no kidding. All right. So I know you don't want to. Do you want to promote anything? You already did. I know. <laughs> you're like, you're like, I love that Dick Grayson book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super. That that woman's the boss, man. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for another week in this 80th anniversary year of Dick Grayson. I like the Dick Grayson. <laughs> so, yes, join us next time for Lonely Phoenix of Dying. And then I think we skip all the way to, like, like the issue at the end of Nightfall, I believe. Is that going to be picked up? Yeah, oh, and then Prodigal. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I can't wait for Prodigal. Well, that's because there's kind of a little bit of a lull for him. I mean, there's some... Well, he wasn't some in those... the... Yeah, he took a break. He was out of the bat book skin for a while, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he was in the... He was in the... Ti- he was in the new Titans, but... Yeah. But then we, yeah, we get the... Those four, ones are... We get the Prodigal, the event so big it's going to take us four episodes to cover. What? <sighs> So yeah, got plenty of homework to do. Come back next time. Same wing time, same wing channel. And remember, keep them flying, Grayson.